Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I show you how to mount one of these smaller park engines, in this case the Park 250 with the rear hatch and the uh, safety propeller connection in front. Let's get to it. This is the Park 250 um, brushless Outrunner electric motor. It's a great little motor. It weighs half of an ounce, uh, 3D airplanes, three to six ounces for sport flyers, up to 12 ounces. It really produces a lot of power. There are two ways to mount the prop, the front and the back with the prop saver and the collet. We'll go through that. But what I want to tell you is some techniques for how to mount this motor, because this motor is a little bit different than your normal electric motor where you have the back mountings that you just screw into a firewall. The majority of the uh, brushless motors will have the rear mounting um, for the motor. This one is actually attached to the back because it's such a small uh, motor. Other ones will have some screws that flush mount. Notice also the back of the propeller shaft sticks out a little bit. You're going to have to drill a hole in your firewall to make sure that that doesn't rub up against. But these motors are very easy to mount. The collet um, uh, for the spinner on the prop in front. But more importantly, just some screws for these connection points to the firewall, and it's very easy to add washers for right and down thrust. An example of this installation with a slightly larger version is right here. You can see there are four attachment points on this one with some washers to adjust the th uh, throw, and then some sort of mechanism for uh, screwing on the propeller onto the front of the motor. Very standard. With these motors where the shaft goes out of the back, we can't we have to use some different mounting techniques. So in this case, the entire motor moves. Notice you have the prop saver device here. The way that is intended to work is the propeller um, simply mounts onto the shaft like this. It just rests up against here. And on these screws that stick out, there's a rubber band that goes from this screw around the propeller to the other side. That way it saves it if the prop hits something on a landing. The, the idea is they don't go too fast. This is a Park 250 mounted in that fashion. You can see this rubber band located right here. The prop's on well enough for this type of model, but that holds on just fine for the type of flying that this model will do. When you have the propeller attached to the front with the rubber band mounting like we had just demonstrated, the motor turns around and the back of the shaft is connected to the rotors here. It's all part of the rotation. This little shaft right here is what you can use to mount the motor on using a carbon fiber tube. What I do with these smaller motors, what I did with the AeroScout, is I have this plastic um, straw. I put a little bit of masking tape around here and I merely put this onto the back. It was a friction fit and then cut off the tube about here. In the firewall, this is a 1 60th inch plywood, I glued onto the back, drilled a hole for that red plastic tube you can see there, inserted it, a friction fit, then glued it in with epoxy glue. It holds absolutely fine for this lightweight model. That's all you need to do. Remember that when you use the plastic tube or carbon tube for a bigger uh, motor, when you glue in the motor, your right left up down thrust adjustment has to be perfectly right once that epoxy sets you will not be able to adjust it like you can with the washers on the regular firewall mounting the electric motor but it's an effective way to mount the motor to um like i did on the pusher or you could have a tractor mount with the motor with this turning along like this so we previously discussed having the propeller on front of the motor with this in the back. There's another way to do the mount essentially backwards. This comes with the kit, but you can slip on this adapter over the motor like this. There are set screws that you can adjust with the included Allen wrench. You can, um, this is a firewall mount that you can screw with these two ends into your firewall. The trick is the rotating motor will be behind the firewall. You'll have to drill a hole for this portion here. And then you attach the propeller like this. You have this comes with the motor. This goes on in place. There are Allen wrench screws here that adjust this to hold it on firmly onto the shaft. So again, the whole thing turns with the motor like that. 
and then with the propeller is put on place, vary by your propeller, and then with the spinner, you simply screw this all in place, tighten it down with a hole. So this is mounted to the firewall, this portion right here, and the whole motor turns like this with the propeller behind the firewall. You'll find most people will not use this methodology. And again, just the shaft onto the motor like that. That's probably the easiest way to do for the smaller models that this will be designed to fly. So again, this is an overview of two ways to mount the Park 250 motor. It's a wonderful little motor. As you can see in the video, this model weighs about five ounces. It's got tons of power of the push configuration. It flies just well in a very handy and quick way to mount the motor, in this case, with a post. This is another view of the Park 250 box. You can see the performance figures. It's a light, powerful engine. This is the tube mount on the back. It's glued in place, just a plastic straw suitable for a smaller motor like this. And this is a close-up of the elastic uh, band that holds the motor prop saver onto the prop shaft. That red tube just glues into a simple hole in the firewall, epoxy it in place, and you're good to go. Plenty of thrust at the field before a test flight and the model flies very well.